We have Kunle Shulaja, Editor-in-Chief, Sports Village Square, joining us via Skype to talk about this. Good to have you with us again. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, let's go straight to what it is now. We, we hear that the Super Eagles coach has reportedly accepted the NFF pay cut, and it means that he wants to remain as a Super Eagles coach. How would you react to this one? Well, it is very good that uh, at least there's an amicable resolution yeah. uh, the situation surrounding our national team. You know, apart from the general problem which everybody is having with teams not training, uh, and uh, their physical fitness is, uh, will be uh, seriously in doubt. We have additional problem of uh, getting a coach for the team, but it's good now that all uh, the, uh, we now have everything clear. The coach has agreed to continue, and uh, now we can now focus on the team, mapping out strategies that will see him excelling when football activities resume. Now, talking about Gennot Raw, uh, when he was asked, he said he's not doing it for the money. He's doing it because he loves the game and he wants to continue from where he left off. He wants to take the Super Eagles to glory days. Well, some also criticized um, the fact that he accepted the contract because they feel like the NFL do not, they, they don't want him any longer. But of course, the man has said he wants to remain. What will be expectations of Gennot Raw and from the NFF? Well, first and foremost, uh, since he said uh, he, he didn't accept the job because of the money, I think I can take the money on his behalf while he continues with the job. Mm. Uh, but most importantly, it, I mean, handling the Super Eagles will no doubt uh, improve the profile of any coach and General Roy for that matter. Mm. It was with the Super Eagles he qualified for the World Cup for the very first time. And it was the Super Eagles platform that he used to be at the World Cup, which has improved his profile. And now the Nations Cup has started, and with the Super Eagles coasting home, if the match day three and match day four had been played in March, there is the possibility that Nigeria could have been the first team to qualify for the 2021 African Cup of Nations, because they were already, they were already running 100% in terms of success. And if they had played the, the Maldives 3 in uh, Asaba against Syria, I know, there's every possibility that they will win. And they will just need just one point to qualify. And that one point will have been obtained in Maldives 4. So with that one very almost certain, and again, if you look at the World Cup draw that we have, we have probably the easiest of the draws among all nations. We are, we are team with uh, Cape Verde, we are team with uh, Central African Republic yeah. and Liberia. And this is draw, what can say on paper. Mm -hmm. So any coach will know that, oh, with that, I have additional benefits of also, also qualifying mm -hmm. for World Cup, and which will also improve his own profile. I think basically those who are the reasons behind his acceptance, what is good, he has now, based, still based on his tactics, how would you, it still begs the question, the rating of a good coach. How would you rate a good coach? Because for me, I feel like a good coach is that man who has won um, several titles and the kind of tactics he applies to um, his uh, formation and how he brings out his football team. Now, a lot of criticism has come for Gennot Raw on the kind of tactics that he, that he uses on the football pitch. Some have said he doesn't even have tactics at all. But do you think that he's good enough to lead Nigeria forward? Well, having been with us since 2016, uh -huh. uh, these four years now, and uh, with the possible extension, I would accept the terms where we've we'll been now talking of him being with us for eight years or even more. Uh, what I would like, because if you look at the past, another coach that has stayed that long with us was Clemens Western. But in the days of Western, uh, Clemens Western, I will remember in the early days, what people were criticizing was that he didn't have a standing team, a team that you can easily reel out from your fingers and say, okay, in goal, it will be this, uh, number two, this, number three, it's up to the last person, uh, the, last, uh, the last person among the first 11. He said he knew what he was doing. And as at that time, he was experimenting too much. And I remember that if you calculate the number of players that passed through with Clemens Westerhoff, uh, up to the time we qualified for the World Cup in 
1993, October 8th. Mm. I think he, had, he must have used over 60 players, must have played for him. But he knew what he was doing then because he was trying to not just to get a first eleven, but also have substitute for each position. But that is not the situation now. We have been keeping uh, Eddie in the right full back. We have Eddie. Once a player is not in you know, form or is injured, then we didn't. We don't have any immediate alternative. Those are the challenges that the world is facing, and we must face it squarely. And being resident in Nigeria now, we now afford him the opportunity of seeing players. Even if those players are not good enough to be in his team, he will have also contributed his own quota in improving the standard of play in the country. For instance, now, if a player is brought from Yemba or from the social stars to train with the super egos, he may not make the cut. Yeah. But by the time he goes back to his club, he will have had a little improvement on the standard of play. And when he gets back to the club, he is going back to that club a better player. And being a better player, he is adding a little more value to his team. And in adding a little more value to his team, he is also adding a little more value into the Nigerian League. And it's going to be a cycle, a win-win cycle for us. So I believe that he still has a lot to do. And it was good that the NFL compared him that he was the resident in Nigeria. Just like Levis was that hope. You only hear Clemens because they have taken the super ego to Papenda to train. Yeah. But basically, he was resident in Nigeria. All right, lastly, let's talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League now because in, in the conditions of the contract, he is supposed to watch the Nigeria Professional Football League games. Now, do you think, uh, how do you think he will go about this? Does he have scouts that will be going around to watch these games to bring news on these players to him? Or does he have to go in uh, match day one to the last match day to watch games spread across the country? Because the last time I saw him was at, at a game at the Agege Stadium the, uh, where, where MFM played against, I think, Wari Wolves. He was present there and he said he would do as much as he can to watch these games. And these games are not on TV. So how do you expect Gennot Royal to go about this? Basically, just like because he's not alone in this, we've had a father people. We have an uh, Clemens Westerhoff. They do travel around the country to watch matches. And it does, mean, it does not mean that we must watch all matches. Like the Nigerian League will resume on March day 27. On that March day 27, you look at the five matches that will be on the picture. Pick the one that will put that is that match where you hope to get uh, quality players, you pick that one. And at the same time, coaches don't work alone. They have scouts, both local and international. Scouts that are unbiased, not those looking for players to sell or to, uh, to just ensure that they have no color. But uh, coaches and scouts that will give you the right assessment of what you have done and you need based on the requirement you have given to them that, no, I need a left-footed uh, forward yeah. who can do this and do that. And when they go to watch matches, they look for players with that quality. So he too must have his, because he cannot be, he's not over the present, so he cannot be everywhere. So he needs to have his own player, I mean, his own staff too, that he will say, okay, please, I will be in Yenugu. There's another man going on in Boa so I want you to be here for me to help me check if there are players of this quality and this quality, and then if you get them, let me know. If, and some coaches will not just come and mention the names of the players for you. They give you the reasons, compelling reasons, why they feel that such players must be in the national team. Yeah. And those are the things. And in doing so, too, even they may suggest players to you which you will turn down. And if you make those scouts and those coaches better, you know, probably I didn't get the beautiful well, when this I'm going for another man, this and this are the things that my principal expects me to, to look out for. That way, you have, you have not only improved our football, uh, I mean, the, the players that you better invite, even the scouts too, they are now getting better ideas on how to scout for players. 
So basically, that's my take.